Hey guys, welcome back to Get Smart with Rory. Once again, doing Science of the Week. The first news, which I think people are going to be very excited by, the fact that the Pfizer vaccine has been approved and administrations are starting in the UK as we speak. Hopefully that will reach other countries very soon. Also, in the news of the pandemic, researchers from the University of South Australia have shown that contact with pets has been very crucial towards people's well-being during lockdown, a fact which I think every single pet owner would have told you was a thing, almost without needing to be said. But at the same time, I mean, now they have the data for it, and now it's science. Pet ownership does good things when you're otherwise isolated. Go figure. China has had a very busy week in science. They first have their lunar landing in the Chenge 5 lunar probe. This is a mission that they're using to collect samples from the moon, bring back to Earth for research, which will be the first time in 44 years that any sort of space mission has done that. And so I'm always for space exploration. But also, China has had more big news. They have turned on their HL2M tokamak reactor. This is a fusion reactor, and that's very exciting because fusion, of course, being the energy source which powers the sun, or I guess rather the sun is a fusion reactor, however you want to think of it. And a tokamak is literally just this donut-shaped magnetic confinement unit that's literally what it means. It's a shortening of the Russian term for that, coined in the 1950s. We take hydrogen, ionize it, pump it into this toroidal confinement unit, and then we heat it up. We get it spinning very fast, get it heated to a cool 100 million degrees centigrade, or 100 million Kelvin. At this point, the 273 degrees difference is basically a rounding error, and at these temperatures you start to see the hydrogen being fused into helium, which, when it happens, releases an enormous amount of energy, and that energy release is kind of the point of fusion, why it's super interesting, and also the hazard of fusion and what makes it difficult. Because, first of all, it has to be heated to that 100 million degrees just to get started. So, you can imagine the amount of energy expenditure that needs to go into it. A popular way in bombs would be to use a smaller nuclear fission reaction to be kind of the spark for fusion. But when you're trying to make a reactor, we can't just be firing nuclear missiles into it. We need to manually heat it, usually with more magnets and electric fields, just pumping energy into that ring of ionized hydrogen. And then we need to contain it, because if the hydrogen gets hot and bursts out of the ring, then it's going to destroy the reactor at minimum, which is tons of hard work and energy down the drain. It takes years to build up this kind of reactor. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER, is in plans, in development, and that's not going to be built in France until 2025. So, there's a lot of work that goes into this. And then you need to contain it, which requires strong magnetic fields, which uses a lot of energy. You try to siphon that energy away into some useful form of work so that we're able to power power lines with it. That's its own form of difficulty. And even if you manage to get all of these things in line so that you're making a net positive so long as the reactor is running, how do you enter more hydrogen into the fuel line? At that temperature, with fusion releasing more energy, the hydrogen which is in the fuel line gets burnt up very quickly, almost instantaneously as far as power would go. But you can't exactly have a fuel line going to it. It's not like gasoline, where it needs to be mixed with hydrogen in order for it to be reactive. No, the only thing that fusion needs to fuse is hydrogen at a high temperature. And so, if I have 
hydrogen at a high temperature being pumped into a system of hydrogen at high temperatures, there's no reason that at the quantities you'd need it in order to have the fuel go on indefinitely, that it doesn't just run its way back up the line. It's really difficult to imagine a system where you'd be able to continue pumping hydrogen in. And so at this moment, there's been no fusion reaction where we've been able to have a net positive with the energy relative to the energy that it takes to get it started. But we do have fusion reactors. And with the HL2M, they're attempting to get the temperatures up to an optimal temperature range for fusion, which is not just the 100 million degrees, but actually double that. 200 million Kelvin, which has never been done before. Big steps. This is the most successful tokamak that we've seen so far, and tokamaks seem to be the favored fusion reactor that we've built. So, big news in energy, big news in space exploration, and some pretty decent news with the pandemic. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, and as always, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you never miss out. And until next time, see ya.